Hey everybody, it's James Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. And today I wanna to show you a couple of different ways that you can check whether or not a string is a palindrome in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so to do this, uh, I'm gonna open up uh, a new JavaScript file using something called Quokka. Now this is a, an extension that you can get for Visual Studio Code, and basically what it's gonna do is give us a little uh, kind of scratch pad for JavaScript. So if I do a console log here, hello, uh, notice at the bottom, actually on the side here, it's gonna show up what the output is, and then at the bottom you'll see it too. So this is just a really quick and easy way for uh, me to just test out some JavaScript, like what we're gonna do now. Uh, and if you guys want to find it, you can come to the extensions and search for Quokka, Q-U-O-K-K-A. And it says live scratch pad for JavaScript. Again, it just kind of gives you uh, immediate feedback when you want to test some things uh, that you're working on and see what it's going to print out. So we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, let's get rid of this uh, hello console. And then I'll just type in is palindrome. And we're going to use an ES6. Uh, function syntax to define a fat arrow function here if we could spell it correctly also so we'll have is palindrome and then at the bottom I'm just gonna start by logging out um, let's say ABC is is ABC a palindrome by calling that function and right now it should be undefined because we're not returning anything so uh, we're gonna do this three different ways. Uh, the last one will be a lot easier, and it's probably the one that you want to go want to going to want to use going forward. Uh, but to start, we are actually the first two ways are basically let's see if we type out ABC here as a string. We're gonna start a pointer kind of or a counter at the beginning of the string, and then one at the end. And basically, we just want to see if we start at the first letter and go to the last letter and then increment up and increment back. So we let's make this a little bit longer. So ABC, ABC. If we start at A and then start at C in the back and then B in the front, B in the back, C in the front, A in the back. And if we go until we kind of meet in the middle, if we ever get one of those combinations of letters that don't match, then we know this is not a palindrome because the first letter will always equal the last, the second, second to last, and so on and so on until you get down to the middle. So we're gonna do a simple for loop. So for let uh, i equals zero, i less than string dot length, i, oh, let's see here, i plus plus. And I'm just gonna start by logging out. So um, logging out the, the output just to show you guys what we're gonna work with. So we're gonna start by using the substring function. So we're gonna call substring on the string and we want to start at the index of i and then we want to increment by one so we just want to basically we just want to get uh, one letter starting at the index of i so if we'll call this correctly here we'll see that we'll get a b c printed out so as you could expect as we go one letter at a time you'll get a then b then c now to do the backwards we can do a similar thing here so we'll do console log uh, uh, string and then get a substring of that string and we'll start with str dot length minus i and this won't quite give us what we expect so the first one is empty string this is because we need to start at uh, length minus i minus one and then uh, we'll start there and we'll only increment by one so same thing basically this first part here is where you want to start and this is where you want to end so we're starting at uh, one from, well, we're starting at the length, minus i, minus one, and then just getting that character. So, and this is correctly printing out uh, CBA. So what we wanna do here is just compare these two things. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna put it in an if condition. So if this does not equal this other thing, so if the start letter does not equal the ending letter, as we increment up and back, looks like we got a, oh, I think I copied that wrong. Let's try that one more time. So if if that start letter does not equal this end letter, there we go, then we'll return false. Because if any of those do not match, then we'll return false. Then by default, if we make it all the way through here, we'll return true. So ABC is a palindrome, no it's not. Uh, ABC BA should be, yep, looks right. Uh, a by itself is true, ABC still not, race car is one, 
that should be true all right cool so that looks like it's working all right so this is uh this is one way we're going to do it the second way is going to be very similar but we're going to clean it up just a tad and um i'll leave that there for you guys to reference let me just copy copy the same thing down here and then i'll do this a little bit different um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that you can access the characters within a string basically as an array so you can think of a string as an array of characters so if we want to get the ith character uh, of a string then we can just use uh, array syntax to get access to it so a uh, string of i here and let's comment out let's start here and comment this stuff out so we're using our new solution and we should see our print so it's printing what we want to right there and if we want to get the um, the ith to last letter, if that makes sense, uh, we can come in and do the uh, str dot length minus i minus one, and this should print it out backwards as well. So then we can take these two things and use those to compare instead of using the kind of longer thing that we had here. So this is going to save us a little bit of, of time and effort. And I originally was using this with substring, so I, I think it's obviously a lot cleaner, a lot easier to do this with uh, array access syntax. Um, just something I didn't really think about. So you guys, if you, if you didn't think about that uh, to start with, that's totally fine. Uh, not a big deal. So let's test this again. Uh, race car is, is a palindrome. ABC should not be ABC BA. Should be uh, A by itself should be ZZZ should be. All right, so that looks like it's working as well. So those are, those are two ways to solve using the kind of a front end pointer on a string and a back end pointer, where basically you're gonna iterate through the string and you're gonna compare the, the letter that you're at as you increment forward with the letter that you're at as you increment backwards and then they, uh, they meet in the middle. And actually, this could be simplified a bit to uh, be, str be string length divided by two because as we get up to halfway, if we if those pointers cross over, it's going to be the same comparisons that we've already made, which is kind of null and void at that point. So we can cut that a little bit short. All right. So the magic that I really want to show you guys is a, a one-liner solution that I think is really cool. And it really takes advantage of, of some of the cool uh, just kind of built-in functions around uh, strings and arrays. And what we want to do, let's start with, uh, let's do a console log of... Uh, string and that'll print out our ZZZ and what we're gonna do is we're going to convert this string to an array and if you want to convert a string to array you can call the split function and you can split on any kind of character so if I let's say if I did uh, ZZZ ZZZ with a space in between and I wanted to split on the space it's gonna have ZZZ as the first index and then ZZZ as the second and notice that there's no space in here because you split on the space so if you split on nothing that's basically saying you want to split after every character and every character will kind of get put into an array and you'll see the space in there so let's go back here so we should have ZZZ in the array and the uh, array has a built-in function called reverse which will reverse the string so let's do ABC here and so string split uh, with empty quotes will give you just an array version of your string and then you can call reverse and we should see this is reverse now CBA and then from an array to get a string you can do a dot join and you join you could join with a special character so if you put a space it would give you C space B space A space if you take away and just do a join with empty string you basically convert that array back to a string so we've taken a string we've called the split function on it with an empty empty string to get an array the array has a reverse function on it that will reverse the array. Then the join will take that array and basically convert it back to a string. So now all we need to do is do a return and say does string equal the reverse string. So string dot split dot reverse. Oh, call the function join empty string and in there. So let's see. ABC is false. ABC ba should be true race car is true a true z true z z z true uh x y z something 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 should not be true cool all right so i hope you guys enjoyed this it's just a little quick uh quick video on some javascript tips um 
to solve a problem that I think you'll see you'll see a lot of uh, this question in interviews, for example, and uh, just this kind of problem in general is really popular with technical programming interviews. Uh, I think just thinking about this one, if you've never done it before, if you're new to it, thinking about this kind of problem, seeing different ways that you can solve it, and then seeing different ways that you can solve it to improve uh, usability, uh, or excuse me, readability for users that come in and see your code and try to put concise code in there and take advantage of the power of JavaScript that it already gives you with something like a one-liner is really going to give you kind of an elegant uh, JavaScript approach to how to solve a problem. So not only are you solving a problem, but you kind of get better as you do it to show them that you really understand what the functions are in JavaScript. And then uh, eventually some of these videos in the same kind of scenario will take advantage of a lot of the ES6 functionality as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have uh, any kind of particular problems like this that you might be interested in seeing me solve, comment below, like the channel, subscribe, find me on Twitter at James Q Quick. Let me know what you guys are up to, what you want to see, and I'll try to get back uh, with some useful videos for you as well. So that's going to do it for this one, and I will see you guys in the next one.